Well, today, on the witness stand, in federal court in Manhattan, E. Jean Carroll had to relive the experience of receiving death threats from Donald Trump supporters while Donald Trump was watching her testify from the defense table in a civil lawsuit that will determine how much money Donald Trump has to pay E. Jean Carroll for his lying about her. As the judge explained to the jury when they were seated yesterday, it has already been proven that Donald Trump did indeed sexually assault E. Jean Carroll in a manner that is considered rape, as the judge said in common parlance. To establish the damages that E. Jean Carroll has suffered and should be compensated for, her lawyers presented on screen for all of the jurors to see a sample of the threats E. Jean Carroll has received. Question, and this, me and this is this message typical of the kind of messages you received threatening you with violence? No. Question, why not? Answer, this is more, it's longer, more descriptive, in an odd way, more eloquent in the way they want me to die. Question, how do they want you to die? Answer, stretched, my neck stretched immediately after a quick public trial. Question, Ms. Carroll, what's the date of this message? This is the day after the trial last year. Question, and how does this person want you to die? Answer, I apologize to the people in the audience because when a woman, particularly a woman, sees the words, we can't help but think of the image. And so he wants me to stick a gun in my mouth and pull the trigger. And I imagine that many of us now can picture that. Donald Trump violated an order given to him directly from the bench today by the judge requiring Donald Trump to not make any comments that the jury can hear. Later, with the jury out of the courtroom, E. Jean Carroll's co-counsel, Sean Crowley, told Judge Lewis Kaplan, quote, the defendant has been making statements that, again, we can hear at the counsel table. Some of the jurors are sitting closer to him than we are. He said it is a witch hunt. It really is a con job. And when you played the last video, he said it's true. That was a video of Donald Trump lying about E. Jean Carroll. Judge Kaplan said, Mr. Trump has the right to present here. That right can be forfeited, and it can be forfeited if he is disruptive. Then the judge, speaking directly to Defendant Trump, said, Mr. Trump, I hope I don't have to consider excluding you from the trial, of, or at least from the presence. I understand you're probably very eager for me to do that. Mr. Trump, I would love it. The judge, I know you would. You just can't control yourself in these circumstances, apparently. There are some press reports that Donald Trump muttered, you can't either, but that line does not appear in the official court transcript. Donald Trump is on trial for not being able to control himself. When he raped E. Jean Carroll in a department store in Manhattan and not being able to control himself, when he lies about E. Jean Carroll, the last thing competent Trump lawyers would want in the courtroom is an exhibition of Donald Trump being unable to control himself. There was a recess immediately after, and immediately after the judge told Donald Trump, immediately after the judge told Donald Trump, you just can't control yourself, then they had a recess. And as soon as the session resumed, one of Trump's co-counsel, Michael Madeo, told the judge, We'd like to make a motion for recusal. There was representation made by Sean Crowley, who was your former law clerk 10 years ago, regarding some of the conduct by President Trump. You immediately accepted her representations. There was no opportunity for the defense to respond. There was no consultation with the defense. She made representations that President Trump was not, not that he can control himself, that he was disruptive. The, court, the judge said, she did, did she? Mr. Medeo, there, are, there have also been a general hostility toward the defense throughout this case based on all of that and under Ethical Canon 3 will make an application for recusal of the court. The judge, denied. Deputy Clerk, shall I get the jury now? The judge, sure. Judge Lewis Kaplan knows every move the Trump lawyers have made and are going to make and rules on their stunts immediately with one word rulings like denied. Later, Trump co-counsel Alina Haba 
moved for a mistrial because E. Jean Carroll testified that she deleted some of the death threats that she received. Attorney Haba, Your Honor, at this moment, I feel I have to ask for a mistrial. The witness has just admitted to deleting evidence herself, which are part of her claim of damages, and I haven't seen them. She has no evidence of them. She hasn't turned them over. The judge denied. The jury had already seen plenty of death threats that E. Jean Carroll did not delete. Attorney Haba insisted that E. Jean Carroll was not suffering because of Donald Trump's attacks on her and that, in fact, she enjoys the attention. Question, at some level, you enjoy this attention? Answer, no. E. Jean Carroll's attorney objects to that question and then the judge overrules the objection and then E. Jean Carroll says, this is not the kind of attention that I enjoy. Question, then why, Ms. Carroll, were you publicizing the lawsuits yourself? Answer, because once I spoke up, E. Jean Carroll continues speaking over her own attorney, attorney's objection, I wanted people to know that a woman can speak up and win a trial. I wanted people to know. It was a major victory, and I wanted people to know. I don't want to be quiet now. I'm 80. It's not right to try to make women be quiet. It's been going on for too long. E. Jean Carroll told the jury that she now lives, quote, in the mountains, in the woods, in a small cabin. She described what Donald Trump has done to her life and the security precautions she has had to take, including her new dog, a pit bull, who is a rescue, who patrols her property inside an electronic fence. E. Jean Carroll described how a simple trip to a grocery store can become terrifying for her. Question, have there been any instances where you change your behavior because of these security concerns you have? Answer, I changed direction a lot while driving. There was also a time at the grocery I had parked in a really safe space. I had gone to the grocery. I had done two weeks worth of shopping. I had the cart filled to the brim. I'm on the way out to my car with the cart and I see a man leaning against my car like this. He was wearing a brown shirt and brown pants waiting for me. So I backed up with my cart and went back in the grocery and stood behind the wall and watched for him to leave. And as soon as he walked away and I hadn't seen him anyplace else, then I quickly exited the store, got in my car and drove home. When I arrived in the driveway and opened my car door, I discovered that I had left my entire cart of groceries in the grocery store. That's how hyper alert I am. I was way more attentive to my surroundings than I was to the food I had just bought. Her lawyer asked E. Jean Carroll what other security steps she has taken. Answer, I alerted the neighbors to be on the watch and I bought bullets for the gun I had inherited from my father. Question, where do you keep that gun? Answer, by my bed.